Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're having an amazing day. Let's get right into the stories. The next one is a pro-revenge story. <clears throat> my middle school years were right before smartphones became ubiquitous. I got my first phone, a basic flip phone with pay-as-you-go minutes, right before starting sixth grade. It cost a dime per minute for calls and texts, and a quarter to send or receive photos. Very expensive on my limited budget. Fortunately, most friends were considerate about preserving my minutes. We'd use landlines or Skype to chat. Well, most friends except Derek. He joined our group in seventh grade, and while funny at first, his manipulative drama starting quickly graded on us. He always played victim when called out, too. Derek refused to respect my situation. Despite requests, he'd constantly text me memes instead of emailing them. With no call blocking available, I was helpless when he got mad once and spammed me with over 100 texts, draining my $40 balance. I demanded he repay me, but he refused responsibility. Furious, I expected my dad to confront Derek's mom and get the $40 back, but dad just said it wasn't worth the fight and added $50 more to my account. However, he did insist the carrier block Derek's number, despite earlier claims it wasn't possible. I was paranoid about more spam, but thankfully got an iPhone with unlimited texts that summer. A few years ago, home between college and a new job, I wandered through neighborhood garage sales. At Derek's house, I didn't think his mom recognized me with glasses and a beard now. I noticed Pokemon napkins for sale. His mom complained of her son's lifelong obsession cluttering the house. I asked if she had more Pokemon stuff, claiming it was for my younger cousin. She didn't realize people still liked it, but brought down some attic boxes. I could barely contain my excitement. This was my chance for payback. I knew Derek's precious Pokemon collection was up there. He once yelled at me for touching his mint condition games that no one else could touch. The first box was junk, but then jackpot. Dozens of perfect Pokemon games and consoles. Binders of rare cards, too. And a box of Lego sets, including Star Wars, I knew were valuable. For all five boxes, she said $100 each or $400 total. I raced to the ATM and returned fast. This score was worth thousands, finally making up for Derek stealing my $40. I gave it all to my uncle who sells on eBay. Despite my urging, he took only 10% after fees and taxes. We logged each item. The total value was around $40,000, 1,000x what Derek took from me. My uncle sold most of it that summer, giving me a life-changing check that paid off loans and a new car down payment. Sweet justice. The first one is an entitled people story. <laughs> I've always loved nature and the outdoors, so when I inherited some land with a dense bamboo forest on it, I was thrilled. The bamboo created a peaceful, serene environment that I enjoyed spending time in. I decided to build a small cabin on the edge of the bamboo forest so I could really immerse myself in this little slice of paradise. For the first few years, everything was perfect. I spent my days hiking through the bamboo, reading on my porch surrounded by the green stalks swaying in the breeze, and just finding harmony with nature. The forest was on the edge of my property, bordering my neighbor's much larger estate. He was rarely around just using his fancy mansion as a vacation home a couple times a year. I'd wave politely if I ever saw him, but other than that, didn't have much interaction with the guy. That all changed one morning when I woke up to the deafening sound of heavy machinery. I rushed outside in my pajamas to find a bulldozer plowing down the bamboo stalks on the edge of my property. My heart dropped as I watched acres of bamboo get mowed down by the giant machine. I ran over, frantically waving my arms and yelling for them to stop. The bulldozer operator finally noticed me and killed the engine. I demanded to know what was going on and who authorized this destruction. That's when my neighbor strolled over casually like nothing was wrong. <laughs> he started going on about his plans to build a golf course and pool house over here and how the bamboo had to go because it didn't fit his vision. I was flabbergasted. Did this guy really think he could just bulldoze down a forest that wasn't even his? When I pointed out that this was my property, he just dismissed me with a wave of his hand. It's a minor technicality. I'm sure we can come to some agreement. Name your price. I saw red. This bamboo forest meant everything to me. I told him there was absolutely no amount of money that could replace what he was so recklessly destroying. The bulldozer had already cleared away about an acre of bamboo. I demanded that he stop this instant and get off my property. The neighbor just chuckled condescendingly. Look. You're being irrational. Don't worry, my landscaper will plant you some nice decorative shrubs and all this will be forgotten. 
Before I could respond, he signaled to the bulldozer operator to fire up the engine again. I had no choice but to get law enforcement involved. Thankfully, the police arrived pretty quickly and were able to stop the destruction before more damage could be done. Over the next several weeks, I wish I could say things improved, but they only got worse. My neighbor kept sending his landscaping crew over to clean things up, which really meant destabilizing the remaining bamboo stalks and trying to kill off the forest. He even had the audacity to build a retaining wall and paved path going through my property to connect his mansion to where he wanted to build the golf course. I put up no trespassing signs, which he completely ignored. Every day it was another infringement on my rights and destruction of the bamboo forest I held dear. I tried reasoning with the guy, but he refused to listen, determined to get his way no matter what. Finally, I'd had enough. I wasn't going to sit there helpless while this entitled jerk destroyed what was rightfully mine. I hired myself the meanest, toughest lawyer I could find. She helped me slap my neighbor with a massive lawsuit for illegal trespassing, encroachment, and damaging my property. We sued him for millions in damages, and even got an injunction to stop any continued work on my land while the lawsuit was underway. Of course, Mr. Moneybags tried some underhanded tactics like hiding evidence and dragging the case out, but my legal team was diligent. After months of grueling court proceedings, we emerged victorious. The court issued a permanent restraining order, forbidding my neighbor from coming near my property again. He had to pay a huge sum in damages which I happily accepted. Though it pained me to put a dollar value on my beloved bamboo forest, I think what hurt him most was the judge forcing him to forfeit the adjacent land where he was trying to build the golf course. My neighbor was livid, but I didn't care. Justice had been served. I took great satisfaction in seeing his entitled smug face scream and turn purple with rage as the verdict was read. Maybe next time he'll think twice before trying to bulldoze land that doesn't belong to him. With the lawsuit settled, I could finally start to heal and rebuild. I used some of the money to have bamboo replanting experts restore parts of the forest that had been lost. It gave me hope to see little bamboo shoots already starting to spring forth from the earth. There was a long way to go, but I was committed to nurturing the forest back to health. The one positive outcome was that the entire legal battle brought my community together. My neighbors were horrified at what I had been through and became passionate advocates for preserving our natural spaces. We started a neighborhood watch program to look out for each other's property. Sometimes I'll still catch myself gazing wistfully at an empty patch of land, remembering the towering grove of bamboo that once stood there. But the bird song drifting through the brisk morning air and the rustle of new bamboo stalks reminds me to stay hopeful. We may not be able to replace what was lost, but with time and care we can grow and nurture something beautiful once again. Though the journey was difficult, I found solace knowing that I fought for what was right. I refused to let my principles and love of nature be bulldozed like my neighbor tried to do with my bamboo forest. The law can seem slow and ineffectual at times, but ultimately it served its purpose in my case. After months of anguish, the courts compelled that greedy, entitled man to take accountability. It set an important precedent. No matter how rich and powerful you are, you can't go around trampling other people's rights. As I sit here on my porch, sipping tea surrounded by the tranquil whisper of bamboo stalks, I feel grateful. Grateful that I was able to save a portion of this exquisite forest that has nurtured my soul. And grateful that somehow, even after such greedy destruction, there is still new growth pushing forth, a reminder of nature's resilience. The coming days will not be without challenges, but I will face them strengthened with the lessons of the past. Though scars remain, hope blooms as bright as the morning dawn, and hope is what we must cling to in order to continue growing. The next one is a petty revenge story. My 40M almost four-year-old daughter loves grocery shopping with me, especially if we get one of those race car grocery carts. If it's a slow time at the store, I take her to the deli, where there is a wide open space in the corner, and spin a circle with the cart. She loves it. It usually gathers smiles in the rare case someone is nearby. Just a dad having fun with his daughter, right? Just yesterday after doing a single spin, we went on our way when an older lady, I'd say early 70s, came towards us shaking her head and glaring at us. I gave her a perplexed look in response to her scowl and she muttered something about having absolutely no respect for public spaces. I responded, sorry ma'am, I was just having fun with my child. Sorry to have offended you. Have a nice day. 
I thought that was that and was happy to move on, but she continued. Her, shame on you for teaching your child such poor manners. I taught my children how to behave in public. Me. Clearly that's a lesson you didn't bother to learn yourself. I wonder how well they turned out. Her, muttered something about them being perfect. My, almost, four-year-old is extremely perceptive and sensitive, and asked if she had done something wrong. I then explained as loud as I could. Me. Absolutely not, honey. That's just a very grumpy old bully. She agrilly responded, I'm not grumpy, I just want to be left alone. Me. With my stern face. No? Well, you certainly are a bully then, and if you want to be left alone, I strongly suggest you start minding your own ducking business. You taught your children to behave in stores. I'm teaching mine to stand up to bullies like you. Thank you for this perfect teaching moment. She finally caught the hint to shut her trap and moved along, still muttering and shaking her head. Petty revenge commences. Twice more we encountered her in the other aisles, and I made sure to overdo the race car theme, but would abruptly stop when we got near her, saying loudly to my daughter, Careful now, honey. We don't want to anger the fun police. And my daughter played along perfectly. As fate would have it, we were approaching the checkout at nearly the same time. We got there first, but I magnanimously allowed her in front of us to be first in line at the solitary manned checkout, knowing she would complain, and she did not disappoint. She immediately started to explain to the till person that she was harassed by me and my daughter this whole time, and how we were disrupting the whole store. The till lady cautiously looked over at me, and I just gave a totally confused shrug. I'm still in my formal work clothes, suit and tie, and my daughter is wearing her adorable poofy fairy skirt. Picture perfect innocence. Having obviously seen me let the lady in front of us in line, the till person gave me an apologetic smile and just nodded and smiled, humoring Karen. She must have tried complaining further at customer services because we were now leaving at the same time, despite our full grocery card, a child insisting on helping with the bagging. Once outside, I made sure to drag race that cart past her as loud and as obnoxiously as I could, and my daughter squealed in delight. Nah. I didn't even bother looking back at that crusty old idiot. She ruined my shopping outing. I hope I ruined her entire day. I do feel bad for people that are this desperately miserable, but I also have zero patience for them taking it out on other people, just trying to enjoy a sliver of joy in their day. I think if enough of us consistently confront people like this, they might just learn to keep their mouths shut and their poor attitudes to themselves. Mandatory edit, formatting, gratitude, and trolls. No content edits. Thanks for all the fatherhood props, made my day. And thanks for all the new grocery store shenanigans tips. Can't wait to bring joy to hundreds of people while pissing off one. My mind is blown about the people defending this lady, labeling me the bully and shaming my parenthood. They're just trolls, right? Please say they're trolls. Shame to say it worked, though. I responded to them. I failed. The next one is a malicious compliance story. For context, I work for a call center. We handle customer questions, complaints, and help process transactions on the person's account. Third call of the day, I receive a distressed woman who is needing to take out a withdrawal to help pay for rent because she received a notice to vacate. I give my usual greeting and let her know I'll be helping her today. I set up my plan of going over her contact information and then providing information on any withdrawal availability. I start with confirming her address and all hell breaks loose. I drowned her goldfish. I ran over her dog and I mowed over her bunny rabbits in the backyard. She proceeded to scream at me when I attempted to give her instructions on how to update the address. She told me very boldly that she will not be calling anyone and that it is my job to fix the problem. Due to her employment status, I am unable to update address information and we have to send them back to their HR for an update. I kept trying to explain it to her on why I couldn't, but she wouldn't listen. When I was finally able to get a word in, I explained to her that I would be unable to process her withdrawal request for her reasons stated. Due to an IRS guideline, the address on file must match the address on the notice. Since it does not, I could not help her. Oh boy, she then started screaming at me. She kept telling me that it's my fault this happened and that I need to fix this situation. Now my job has a zero tolerance for escalated participants. I could have easily put her on hold and reached out to our escalations team. I decided that I would keep the call because she wasn't threatening me in any way, just being unreasonable. I attempted again to give her information on who she could speak with, but she kept talking over me. I finally hear her blurt out, Stop talking. 
You talk too much and you're not answering my questions. Cue the malicious compliance. I went silent. She started talking and asked questions. I didn't say a peep. I should have put her on hold, but I decided to see what else she had to say while I was doing what she asked. After a few minutes, I honestly thought she was going to hang up. I finally chimed in. Oh, did you want me to speak now? Because earlier you didn't want to hear what information I was trying to give you. Are you ready for it now? She was still screaming at me. I attempted one more time to get her the information she was wanting, but she wouldn't stop talking over me. I even paused quite a few times so she could just say whatever other nonsense she had to say. Eventually she hung up out of frustration. I reiterated a few times that I want to help her, but I will not fight for the right to speak over her. The next one is an entitled people story. For a small bit of context, we live in the U.S., so we drive on the right side of the road, and passenger side is the right side of the car. My local grocery store is located in a small shopping center directly off one of the main roads that pass through my town. Behind the shopping center is a fence cutting it off from a side road, and across that road is a playground and field area for soccer and other such sports. Surrounding this park and behind it are blocks worth of houses. Because of this, both the park side of the road and the shopping center side have parking spaces, and there are two intentional holes in the fence, made by shopping center, so people from the community can pass through the fence to reach the shops. The road is also wide enough to have one lane of traffic each way between the parked cars. On to the story. My family lives about three short blocks behind the shopping center, so instead of going around the long way and parking in the shopping center parking lot, my husband and I regularly park along the fence in one of the marked parking spots and walking through the fence to shop at the grocery store. On this day, we had someone following behind us as we went to park, right turn into the spot. My husband, who was driving, I was in the passenger seat, turned on the blinker, found a spot, and went to make the right turn into it. The woman driving behind us thought it was a brilliant idea to keep going straight to go around us on the passenger side. So as you can expect, she hits the passenger side, right where the door's hinge is located, and then scrapes along the side to the front. My husband and I are shocked, but pull up a bit further to a spot about two or three down, park and get out of the car to inspect the damage and find out what happened. I had trouble opening my door, but after a small bit of force, managed to get it open. Damage wasn't too bad, but we were definitely shook. Then, before we had a chance to react, the woman charged at us, screaming that we're irresponsible and hit her. Luckily, we had a witness that was loading up her own car with groceries, and she got between us and berated the woman for screaming at us and told her what she did was illegal and she had hit us. The woman stood her ground and demanded we pay for the damage to her car as, I was going straight and you hit me. I called the cops to take a report, and my husband and her exchanged insurance information, which she gave us problems with too, as at first she claimed she didn't have a phone with her, and then all of a sudden had one when the cops came. The cop taking both sides of our story tried very hard to explain to her what she did wrong. He got her to agree that it's a one-lane road. He got her to agree that we were making the right into the parking spot. When he tried to explain that she can't go around someone on a one-lane road making a right, she kept telling him that she had the right because she was going straight and we were turning and then demanded we pay her for damages. This went on for almost an hour, until the cop pinched his nose like he was getting a headache and gave up, telling her to take it up with the insurance company. Unfortunately, as it's still recent, I don't have a follow-up to this, but you'd think, if even a cop is telling you that you're wrong and trying to explain it to you like you're a child, you'd at least wonder if maybe you're wrong. Sorry if this story isn't as satisfying as others but wanted to share my recent experience with a wild entitled person. Hope everyone has a wonderful entitled person free day. The next one is an entitled parent story. Cast, me, M25, my sister Maria, F21, our mother Anna, F44, our father John, 45. For background, my parents met in their late teens and soon had me. Three years later, they had my sister, Maria. When my sister was one years old and I was three years old, my parents got separated. They never got married. Because my father cheated on my mom with a woman who's over 20 years older than him from what I've been told. And they are still together now. Growing up, mom never told me or my sister too much about John. I know that both his parents and his sister pretty much disowned him after he cheated on my mom, but they are irrelevant to this story. Anna never got full custody for us after that because she didn't know how. Back then, she didn't know what full custody meant, 
but John still was sending Anna 200 euros a month for each of us until we became 18. I soon moved after turning 18 to live with a friend, and in 2021 moved to another country where I currently live. After that, I only kept little contact with my mom and almost none with my sister. Fast forward to the 31st of August, so three days before this post is made, on my birthday, I get a call from an unknown number. I pick up and the following conversation followed. Me. Hello? John, OP. Me. Yes, who is this? John, it's me, John. Me, I'm sorry, but I don't think I know you. John, I'm your dad. Me, I'm sorry. John, how are you? Me, why did you call me? John, it's your birthday, right? Me, yes it is. John, happy birthday, OP. Me, again, why did you decide to call me now? Don't you have a new family? John, yes, I'm married now, but I have no other kids other than you and Maria. At this point, I was in disbelief, so I ended the call. I couldn't understand why did he decide to call me after 20 ducking years of no contact between us. He tried calling me again, but every time I ignored the call, the next day mom called me. Me. Hello? Anna. Why did you hung up on John? Me. Mom, are you serious right now? Anna. Yes, he changed now. He wants to have a son and daughter again. Me. I guess it's just a bit too late, don't you think? Anna. Stop being dumb and go talk to your father. Me. No, you go talk to him if you want to. I have nothing to talk about with that piece of crap. After I said that, I hung up on her also. Both my mom, her side of the family, and also my sister have been blowing up my phone daily. I already blocked some of them. He hurt us badly and everyone decided to forgive him out of nowhere for no apparent reason. I am not forgiving him and I'm thinking about cutting contact with the rest of my family if they keep defending him. A good father doesn't leave his children for 20 and then, out of nowhere, decides that he is entitled to having a relationship with them. I'll keep you all updated on this, but for now I'll be going no contact with them for a while. <laughs> Thank you for watching, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you again tomorrow.